What's going on, y'all? I'm here with another fun YouTube tutorial on how to customize your Bash profile with some seriously cool aliases to help make your life easier. Now, I found out I could do these recently, um, and I kind of wish I knew about them earlier because they help simplify a lot of the stuff I've having to I've been having to write so much in my terminal as a developer, especially with the Git workflow. Ugh. So we're gonna help make that a bit cleaner. Um, I'm going to start on the PC side of things and then hopefully have a Mac video or even an end to this video where I do a voiceover showing you how to do it on Mac. Jumping in on the PC side of things, we're actually going to be utilizing a console emulator called Commander. And it's also the recommended like Unix bash style environment for us to utilize our command line stuff in. Um, and this is also what Covalence recommends you download and utilize throughout our curriculum. So downloading this is really simple. You literally just download the full zip. <clears throat> It'll download the zip file, and then you can unzip the file into a directory called commander. Uh, typically, and I'd also recommend somewhere on the root of your computer or in the root of your user's directory. So if you had like C user slash Luke in my case, it'd be C user slash Luke slash commander. I chose to make it just on the root of my entire hard drive. So it's literally just C colon slash commander. Easy and simple to find. It is just as easy as that to get it downloaded and working, and it looks kind of like this. You can actually change the font size and colors, which I typically do here. Um, and it gives you access to some of the same stuff you can do in Command Prompt, but a bit more versatile stuff that you can do with a typical terminal emulated in Windows via LS, CD, making directories, touching files, Vim editor, and all that kind of fun stuff, along with downloading command line tools like Create React App, uh, React Native, React Native Init, React Native CLI, Git CLI, all that kind of fun stuff. Expo, Heroku, this will allow us to download that stuff and make sure we have access to it here inside of Commander. So typically when you're creating a new GitHub repository and project tied to it on your local computer, AKA for every lab in Covalence, you go through the same process. You create the GitHub repository online, you come back to your command line in the project directory, git init, then you do a git add all, git commit initial commit, then you do a git remote add origin and git push dash u origin master. The same workflow that you would see when you create a new GitHub repository online. And as many times as I've typed that and done that, I was like, surely there's an easier way to do this. And there is via things called functions and aliases. In Commander, you pretty much write most things as an alias to my understanding. And on the Mac side of things, because you have a true, not emulated, bash terminal and bash profile, you can use functions or aliases and you can make like source script commands and we'll get to that later. But we're starting on the easiest side of things in Commander on Windows here. So how do we alter these aliases? Um, I'm going to close this window commander here because every time we make alters, alterations to our aliases, we have to remember to refresh our commander window. Otherwise, it won't know they exist. So I have navigated automatically to, like I told you guys, uh, local disk C commander where I have my commander unzipped. Inside the commander folder, there is a config directory. And inside of here is where we're going to have access to this user dash aliases command script. You can open it, I believe, in most text editors. I'm going to open it with VS Code to make it easier to read because I like having things open in VS Code and the coloration it does and the line numbers and things like that. And you'll notice that yours might not look exactly the same as this, especially if you haven't touched it before. I actually already have several aliases created to help make my life easier. I have written Plenty of times, npm install with a package name, update, start with a certain script, npm run with a certain script. Um, I've written git checkout, clone, all these things so many times that I've actually given them aliases. So like I run, when I type in the letters n, i, it will actually go ahead and run npm install. And this dollar sign asterisk says run any words after n, i individually as packages. So if I installed three packages, I would have n, i, React, React DOM, React Router DOM, it'll install all three packages. You can actually change this down to a dollar sign one and it'll take the first word after your alias. So if I had dollar sign one and I wrote NI React and then React DOM, it would actually ignore the React DOM and just install React. So we actually use asterisk to say all words following this alias will be um, like user inputted things we can utilize with dollar sign asterisk. 
And you'll notice I have several here. Like instead of having to type get status, all I have to type is status and it'll automatically run a get status for me. I have one for push and I discovered we can actually have one for creating GitHub repositories. So we're gonna create a new alias called create like that. And what we're gonna have to be doing is curling using the command line curl to get some information or add some information to an online server. In this case, it'll be uh, the API for GitHub. So we're gonna be typing in curl and a dash capital H for a header flag. Our header will be authorization like this, colon token, and then we're gonna be pasting in a token value which we have to get from GitHub itself. So coming back to our Chrome browser here, I can go to my GitHub profile. So in the top right corner here, I can go to my settings here, which will take me to this public profile page. Then down here in developer settings is where I wanna go. I wanna generate a personal access token. You can see I already have a couple here. I'm gonna create a new one for testing purposes. I'll be deleting it after this video to make sure you guys can't snag it and attempt to troll me by creating a bunch of goofy repos in my profile. Uh, token description, test video, or something like that. You can call it whatever you want to make sure you're aware of what each token does. You can give it all privileges, but I just want this one to particularly be involved with the repo privileges in terms of creating and looking at them. So I'm gonna select that guy there and click on generate token. Now this will only be visible now and never again. So I'm gonna copy and paste this into a side notepad I have open because after I navigate away from this page, I'll never see this little guy again to make sure that someone can't get your GitHub login credentials and start pulling your tokens without you knowing about it. All right, so it's a little extra level of security. So we'll be done on the GitHub profile page. And the next thing we have to do with that is come paste that token value in here inside of the string like that. And that header is set up. We're gonna need another header type because we're gonna be making a post request to their REST API endpoint, which if you don't know what that's, those are, that's okay. And if you're interested in know-how, go ahead and sign up for the covalence curriculum because we teach exactly what all that stuff is. Uh, the root URL for our API server here is https colon slash slash api.github.com. So that's, that's the request we're going to be making to the server right there. That's, that's where we're going to be making the request to the server. And there's actually a particular endpoint on it on the repository section where we can create repositories where it's a post request to api.github.com slash users slash repos. And at a minimum, the only required field here is a name. So that's all we're going to need to pass. And as you can see, it is a JSON type. And after that, it should create the repo for us. And that's what we want this video to show us how to do. So I'm gonna go back into my VS Code editor here and I have to have another header actually preemptively because we're gonna be making a request using a JSON object here, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation, which looks like a JavaScript object, but it's not. You'll notice the properties are also in a double quotes, which is how it is separated from JavaScript object. It looks like one, but it's not. And yeah, all we need at minimum is this name. So because we're making a JSON type request, we have to specify in our headers that we're gonna be making, you guessed it, a content type colon application JSON slash JSON, there we go. And that's just a typical header object you'd be putting together if you're making any kind of API or Ajax request, right? And then we're gonna have to pass along some data, which I can do with this lowercase d dash data flag like that. And the data will actually be some string, which will be a JSON object. And the JSON object will have a name like this, outside the double quotes and a colon, and then it'll have the value, which will be our argument after our create. So there's the dollar sign one. Now, because this data object must be wrapped in these double quotes like that, we're gonna have to do our escape character on these inner double quotes to make sure they are not read as the end of our data. So like this outside double quotes encompasses the entire JSON object in the middle. And because the JSON object has double quotes around the key and the value in this case, we have to make sure we escape those double quotes via the backslash like so. And we actually will also need Ah, I, I knew I forgot something. I was like, something's missing here. That's actually the route where we have to hit, right? Like I have the headers generated, I had the data generated, but I don't tell this curl where to make this request to, which will be again, HTTPS colon slash slash API dot GitHub, if I can type dot com slash user slash repos. 
yeah, slash repos. And that'll be the route we're hitting. This token will get decoded and on GitHub's end and will be recognized as my checkfoss username and login and specify, hey, this guy is a val has a valid token to log in and create repos via this curl request. So with that having been typed, let's give it a shot. If you have Commander open, uh, you're going to have to close it and reopen it after you're saving this file to make sure you have this crate available in that newest instance of your bash. So I'm going to go ahead and open Commander here, and I'm just going to give it a shot. We're going to create something called test-repo. And because I called my alias here create, and it runs this command on the dollar sign one, means whatever appears after my alias create will be our value for dollar sign one, AKA test dash repo, hit enter. Looks like it went through okay. I should have a 201 created. Yeah, looks like it created the repo. I don't see any errors. It's typically a good sign. So let's go back to my GitHub profile now. Oh my goodness. Let's see, GitHub. Actually, let's go this way, user profile repositories, and there it is, test repo, created from the command line without me even having to go into GitHub, which is quite nice. Um, so that is a perfect start to how to write your own aliases and be able to make your life a heck of a lot easier. And if you're wondering, yes, you can actually chain commands together. So we can actually do something like this. We can have our entire creation process wrapped into one single command. So we can do git init, and then we can do a double ampersand. So after we initialize a new GitHub repository in, or a new Git repository in this directory, we can then make the repository online. And then right after that, we would have to do a Git remote add origin to tie these two together. And that would be to HTTPS colon slash slash GitHub.com slash your username. In my case, it's Pshekfas. And I would do a dollar sign one because that's the name of the repo. So if it was test dash repo, it'd be github.com slash your username slash test repo dot git. After that, go ahead and do a git add all pending file changes and then do a git commit with a message of initial commit. And then finally round it out with a git push dash u origin master. And that should do our entire process that I described at the beginning of this video all in one line for us. So now that I've saved this file, again, I'm gonna close this current commander window, open up a fresh one to refresh my command aliases that I've coded in. I'm going to CD in something called my app, which is an expo app I've been goofing off with in React Native. And I don't, if it's a GitHub repository, Okay, it's not, it's not a GitHub repository, so I don't have this online. I don't have this ready to go locally, so hopefully this command will do it all for me. So I'm going to create something called my-app online, and it should be all set up via one enter button. And looking good so far. It looks like it's pushing. Perfect. So that's it. Let's check it out. My repositories, refresh. There's my app with a message called initial commit, and everything pushed up and ready to go all via one command we type into Commander. So running this in Mac OS is simple, and it's actually fairly similar to this, but has a little bit more setup and under to understand what's going on. So I'll be back with the next video on how to do that shortly. For now, you Windows users, enjoy this power and make your own aliases out there and share them in our Discord. I'd love to see what kind of cool stuff you guys come up with to see if I can't bring it into my own aliases to make my life even easier. Just kidding, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and do the Mac side of things here. Um, I figured I'd go ahead and just cram it into one video and try to take, instead of trying to make two different videos. So on the Mac side of things, uh, you want to go into your Finder and on the root of your computer. In my case, that is the Galactica, since I'm a huge Battlestar Galactica fan. One of my cats is literally named Apollo after Lee Adama from the series. Um, and on the root of your drive is where you're going to have to enable viewing of hidden folders. Um, once you enable that, you'll see all these dot hidden folder names, and that's how I actually hide something naturally on a Mac. You would um, prepend it with a dot to make it hidden. So you'll see that you'll have some things called a bash profile, bash history, things like that. I have this custom git commands one already. I created that beforehand, and that's something that you guys are gonna be creating essentially. So, I'm going to open my Mac terminal here in just a second. Here we go. 
Um, and what I'm going to do is you can CD tilde like that. And seeding tilde, depending on where your root directory is, it will take you to the root directory of your computer. So like, even though mine naturally starts on root, you could actually not be starting there and you can CD to the root by doing CD tilde. After that, I use the touch command to create a new file and I call my file dot to hide it, to make it hidden, custom dash stuff dot sh. And that stands for dot shell script commands, right? For dot shells. And so that'll be the file type. And so after we create it, we hit enter and it creates the file. You can see my finder update and has it written there for us. It is currently blank. I'm gonna choose to open it with VS code, kind of like I did on the PC. This is almost the same thing we we're just doing in user dash aliases. I'm gonna write a quick basic function here to show you guys how to write to how to write it on the Mac side of things. You can write aliases um, on Mac side of things. Typically, if you're taking some kind of user input, you make it into a function. And this particular function, all it's gonna do is gonna be called test, and it's going to echo, AKA just repeat whatever the first argument is after we call the function test. So since we've written this little function here now, we need to connect it into our bash profile. Um, so saving and closing that screen out, I have a bash history, a bash RC, and a bash profile. You should have a bash profile at minimum. And inside this bash profile, again, I'll open up in Visual Studio Code or just your favorite text editor. And you see, I already have my source brought in for my custom git command. So you're probably not going to have that. Um, at the Somewhere near the bottom of your, of your uh, bash profile, just add in the keyword source tilde for root slash, and this is a literal file name you just wrote. So it was dot, in my case, custom dash stuff dot sh like that. And now when you reload your terminal, it should be bringing in this file and almost importing it for use. So I will manually restart terminal here. Here we go. Now that I've restarted it, I have access to the function test. And I pass in the argument words and there's the echo words so that's how you would link them together you're going to create your file typically hidden so dot get commands dot sh and then you would go to your bash profile and require that as a source would be source tilde slash dot custom get commands dot sh whatever you call your file and that's the file that's going to have your functions so kind of like we just talked about on the other side of things here we should have a custom yeah so like i had you probably have custom stuff or custom commands or whatever. Um, we can actually go in and check out what I did for the Mac side of things. It is actually the exact same curl command that I had showed off in the last, in the window side of things here. So again, I type in GC on my Mac and along with my sole argument, which will be the repo I want to create, it will get in it curl to that same authorization header with the token. And I just now realized I'm showing my Mac one, so I have to reroll that one after this video too. But it's the exact same command we wrote in the last part of the video where we're talking in Windows. And I'll actually have this command in the description of this video so you can try just copying and pasting it and checking it out. And you see I could have used aliases for these, but I chose to write them as functions where I have GA is my git add all, git commit with a message and git push. GS is git status. You can change them to whatever you want to be. I just happen to like shorthanding all this stuff to make my life simple, fun, and easy. So that sums it up for the Mac side of things. And hopefully you guys are out there creating your own aliases on both Commander in Windows and Terminal in Mac OS X. Happy hacking, y'all.